One of the common questions we get is about local storage, whether you should use it, whether it's better than the network storage, and so on. And to be honest, the answer is not easy because, well, it depends. So in this video, we will look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of using local storage with your Streamsy-based Apache Kafka cluster. And let's start by having a better look at how Apache Kafka is using the network. Your Kubernetes cluster will have some worker nodes which will be connected through a network. And your Kafka brokers will be running inside pods on these worker nodes. And the Kafka brokers will of course use the network. When you have consumers or producers, they will need the network bandwidth to send the data to the brokers or consume them from the brokers. When a new data are received by the broker, it will also need to be replicated to the other brokers, to the other replicas. So again, that requires more bandwidth. And finally, the Kafka brokers need to use storage as well. And in case the storage is attached through the same network, there will be again some more bandwidth needed to handle the storage. To give you a better idea what does this mean, let's have a look at an example. It is a bit simplified, but it should help to understand the situation. Let's imagine we have a Kafka cluster with three brokers and we are using topics with replication factor 3. Now, if you have a producer which is sending data at 30 megabytes per second to the cluster, then in average each broker will receive 10 megabytes of data per second. And if we have three different consumer groups consuming these data, then the broker needs to send these data at 30 megabytes to second, per second to each of them. But that's not it. There's also the replication. The data we receive on our broker need to be sent to the other two brokers to keep their replicas up to date. And the other way around, we need to receive the data from these other two brokers to keep our replicas up to date. So in reality, the data in will be 30 megabytes per second and the data out will be 50 megabytes per second. And of course, all the data need to be written to the disk as well. So the disk write will need another 30 megabytes per second. The disk read depends on a lot of different factors. Are your consumers all consuming only the latest messages? Are these latest messages cached in the memory? So it's quite hard to say what the disk read will be. But even if you count just the data in, data out, and the disk writes, you find out that you get quite a lot of traffic for a fairly small amount of produced data. And don't forget that Apache Kafka is probably just one of the many applications running in your Kubernetes cluster. So what does it mean? If your network is good enough to handle this, then you are fine and you don't need to be worried. But it might be that your network is not good enough and it's now your performance bottleneck. So what can you do? There are different options. You can, for example, set up a separate network used only for the storage to separate the different traffic flows and get better performance. Or you can use something completely different for storage than the regular network, for example, fiber channel. Or, as the topic of this video suggests, you can also use local storage. Thanks to local storage, all the writes and reads from the disk will happen locally and will not use the network at all. So you save quite a lot of bandwidth. Usually it has some other advantages as well. Apart from the performance, it's often also much cheaper than using some complicated storage appliances or building the different networks. So local storage is great, right? Well, maybe it has some disadvantages as well. Let's imagine, for example, the following scenario. We have a Kubernetes cluster with multiple different nodes, and some of them run the Kafka brokers. And the brokers use the network attached storage. Now imagine that you need to shut down one of the worker nodes to do some maintenance, or maybe it just crashed. So the node crashes and disappears. And what happens is that the network disk which was used on this worker node will be unmounted. 
and it can be simply mounted on another node and the broker can start there and continue in what usually takes seconds or minutes. So your availability is not a problem and you have very quickly your all three brokers up and running again. Now let's have a look what would happen in the same scenario when using the local storage. You have again your four worker nodes and on three of them you have the Kafka brokers running. But this time the storage is local and it's located directly on the worker node. So when you need to do maintenance for one of the nodes or when it simply crashes, then well, the node is gone. And also you have an empty worker node there which is running and waiting. The pod cannot be scheduled there because the disk with its data it's gone as well together with the worker node. So we have to sit there and wait until the problem is fixed or until the maintenance is complete and the node can start up again. And then it joins your cluster and you have all three brokers running again. But what if it's even worse? What if the node crashes and doesn't recover anymore? What if it's lost forever? Well, you are now left only with two brokers and their storage. So you will need to take a manual action. You will need to delete the persistent volume and the persistent volume claim to tell Kubernetes and the Strumzy operator that this broker is gone and new one should be created. And Strumzy will then create the PVC and the PV on the new node. But first it will start with an empty disk and no data. So this broker right now will be only little use for you. Only slowly it will need to resync all the data from the other nodes which remain. And imagine that if your brokers are using terabytes of data, then this may take very long time. And during all this time, you don't have your free brokers running and available. You have only two of them. And if anything happens to one of the two brokers left, then yeah, you might have a real problem. So as you can see, local storage has some advantages, but also some disadvantages. It gives you very good performance at a low price. But when things go wrong, it is a bit more complicated to recover and it takes a bit more time than when using network storage. Which side wins? That depends on you, your environment and your situation. But hopefully this video will help you decide. Thanks a lot for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter and star us on GitHub.